So, hello everyone. Uh, can you hear my voice? Okay. So, uh, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ankit Agrawal, a security consultant and project lead from Paladin Networks Private Limited. Uh, today I'm going to uh, take you through the topic of uh, Heartbleed, how to protect your business from future attacks. Uh, let's go through the agenda first. Uh, what we have is an introduction, uh, what is Heartbleed, then uh, we'll check whether how uh, an individual or an organization is vulnerable to Heartbleed. Then we'll uh, move ahead and we'll see what steps should be taken to address the bug and future learning. In the end, we'll uh, have a short uh, you know, live exploit for, of uh, Heartbleed uh, on a demo server, which you know, I have created. And then we'll also have a question answer session. So if uh, anyone of uh, you have any questions, uh, you can put on the chat. And then I'll answer those questions. OK. So uh, let's move on with the introduction. So what we have first is SSL. Uh, so uh, whenever we uh, you know, uh, go over the internet, uh, we browse certain stuff on the internet, we always uh, you know, are worried about whether our data is uh, encrypted or whether uh, there is data security of whatever we are using, be it username, password, be it uh, sharing mails or any data over the internet. So how can uh, one recognize whether that uh, information which uh, our end user has shared is uh, over an encrypted channel or is not uh, available to everyone? So well, one of the ways to identify is uh, using SSL. SSL is a protocol which is designed in such a way that it is used to provide communication security over the internet. So uh, SSL makes use of session keys which is used to encrypt data between the end users, be it uh, you know, a, a computer or a mobile phone connecting to a website. So if it is over an encrypted channel, it is through SSL using some session keys. Uh, there are various ways or tools with the help of which uh, you know, uh, SSL can be implemented. One of them is open SSL. Uh, how can an end user recognize uh, whether the data which he is transmitting is over an encrypted channel? Well, this can be done, as you can see in the image, uh, by a lock sign, which is displayed whenever you access any website. So if that particular website is over an encrypted channel, then you can understand by that lock image whether that you are uh, over an SSL channel. Also, whenever you access any site using HTTPS, this ensures that you are over an encrypted channel. Or the data between you and the server or the website will be in an encrypted format. There won't be anyone who can decrypt it unless there are certain ways through which it can be done. Okay, so when we say open SSL as a tool which can be used to implement encryption, we'll see what is open SSL first. Well, open SSL is an open source tool developed in C programming language to facilitate SSL. Well, this is a, uh, you can say as a project or a protocol which is designed by various members of the OpenSSL team to provide cryptographic functions and they also provide various tools or utilities to implement encryption of data. As of 2014, two-third of the web servers over the world use OpenSSL and it was founded in 1998. So what is heartbeat? Just to avoid any confusion, it is heartbeat and not heartbleed. Okay, heartbeat is an extension which is uh, there in OpenSSL. What heartbeat does is heartbeat messages are used to check whether a TLS is reachable and alive, whether the communication between the client and the server is alive. This is done with the help of heartbeat extension, which is the uh, functionality provided by OpenSSL. Okay, so now we know that heartbeat is an extension, which is there in OpenSSL. We need to understand how heartbeat works, how heartbeat will check the functionality of Keep Alive. It is done using heartbeat request. 
uh, as you can see in the uh, first uh, image, this is an heartbeat request, which is the uh, original one drafted by OpenSSL RFC. In a heartbeat request, there would be four type of uh, blocks. First would be SSL version 3 record length. The heartbeat message type, it can be of two type, either it can be a request or a response. Then will be a heartbeat message length. And in the end, it will be message data, which can be of variable length. Now, according to uh, uh, OpenSSL RFC, the record length and the heartbeat message length are user supplied inputs. Hence, what over here can be done is an attacker can manipulate the request in such a way that he can enter his inputs. So, if you can see over here, below, what is there is a crafted request by an attacker. So what an attacker will do, he'll craft a request in such a way that he'll manipulate the heartbeat message length as 64K. So in this, what it is happening is, there is no bound check at the server end. Whenever a heartbeat response is crafted by the server, what OpenSSL does is, it does not check the length of the heartbeat request which is there which allows the server to give or retrieve more data since my attacker has uh, my crafted the request in such a way that 64k of heartbeat message length should be there what server will do server will go at its end it will fetch the required data that will be of 64k since there is no bound check and so we will return that particular uh, memory in the form of leaked memory along with the heartbeat response. So in this case, if you see the SSL record length will be 64K. The heartbeat message type is HP response. The heartbeat message length is 64K. And then along with that, it has the leak memory which server has given across because there is no bound. This extra data, you know, is unknown data from the memory and they send the response to the client since it's a client-server communication. This data can contain sensitive information such as session cookie, passwords, and at certain extent, they also contain server keys as well, which can be used in various ways to impersonate. So OpenSSL, uh, what they have done is they have uh, you know fixed this particular bug uh, which is there in heartbeat and they have uh, what they have done is they have implemented a bound check so whenever a heartbeat request uh, comes to an uh, server or to any client who is using OpenSSL they will check the heartbeat request type and then they will reply back this patch is fixed in OpenSSL 1.0.1g that is the latest version which they have released. Alternatively, if there are uh, issues wherein the developers cannot install the latest version because of some dependency of the application, what they can do is they can recompile the current OpenSSL with heartbeat removed from the code by using the option hyphen do the OpenSSL underscore no underscore heartbeats. What it does is, it will just remove that particular functionality which has been implemented by OpenSSL and it will work as a normal OpenSSL. So with this option, when we recompile the code, we can see that the bug will be fixed and there won't be any heartbeat request and response for that particular recompiled code. Okay, so till now what we have seen is, we have seen what is SSL why an encryption is used in our internet uh, for uh, the data which is traveling and so what is hard bleed then hard bleed this heartbeat bug allows a 
attackers to eavesdrop on communications, steal data directly from services and users. This data then can be used by the attacker to impersonate the actual user. So what it does is it actually compromises secret keys which can be used to identify service providers to encrypt traffic, the names, passwords of the users and actual content of the site or the server which is vulnerable to hard play. This particular attack or bug is there in vulnerable versions of OpenSSL. So who discovered hard play? This was discovered by Neil Mehta of Google Security who was one of the first one to report this particular vulnerability to OpenSSL and this was done on 1st of April 2014. Along with that a team of Codenomicon was uh, working on you know, the defenses or defensive tools which they had uh, in safeguard feature and they reported this bug to NS NCSCFI for vulnerability coordination and reporting it to OpenSSL. Uh, along with that, for public awareness, what uh, Codenomicon did is they gave this particular bug a name which is hard bleed and it's lower as well, which you can see on the uh, right hand side of the uh, presentation. And that particular logo was uh, designed by Codenomicon to, uh, for public awareness of the users. So uh, we know now that this particular bug is there in OpenSSL because of heartbeat extension which was implemented. So we will see to what extent this can be exploited. Well, a attacker who has access to any server which is vulnerable to heartbeat can gather sensitive information such as username, password, session ID and server keys. An attacker in possession of server keys means sensitive data would be read just like open text by an attacker. As if no encryption exists at all, attacker then can impersonate as a secure website or server could gather petabytes of data, be short, petabytes of encrypted data and with the help of the server keys, he can decrypt it easily. Since uh, the, server, the attacker would have the, encrypt, the server key which we can be used to actually decrypt the data. Uh, we also will see uh, in this case there is a real world example wherein Mark Lohman was actually able to gather credentials and do the exploit. So what he did was he was actually able to perform heartbeat exploit on Yahoo service and this was done remotely. What he did was he issued an SSL heartbeat request and the response he got a memory dump from Yahoo service which allowed him to extract the username and password. So if you see, this was the request sent to mail.yahoo.com wherein he was actually able to get the login ID and password which is obfuscated for reasons. So this particular bug was there and it actually has affected many people who are there online, famous services as well. Now with hard bleed, there is an another important variation to the hard bleed attack known as reverse hard bleed that exploits the same vulnerability which is there in OpenSSL that is using hard bleed extension. Reverse hard bleed was explicitly pointed out by security researcher Jake Williams. The advantage of the same unnoticed programming mistake which was there in OpenSSL is used over here but in a reverse manner. So during hard bleed an attacker as a client tries to extract data from the server whereas in reverse hard bleed a web server attacks a client which can be an individual, it can be an individual user, machine, laptop, desktop or a phone as well in which it is vulnerable to open access. So a malicious server can send bad hardware request packets to the client which uses OpenSSL and extract data from the client. The heartbeat is used in 
and uh, in this particular attack in a symmetric way where they can be initiated either by a client or a server to check the connection since both the endpoints if they are vulnerable to the same version of OpenSSL this particular uh, reverse heartbeat functionality would work since heartbeat it is irrespective uh, whether it's a client or a server anyone can initiate the heartbeat request and a response can be obtained okay so now when we think that reverse heartbeat is in existence on the same lines of open SSL we also need to think who all will be vulnerable to reverse heartbeat uh, any client that runs vulnerable version of open SSL certainly some web browsers PDF readers, file sharing applications that run locally on your device are the clients which are vulnerable to reverse heartbeat. So any code in any application installed on the client who makes an outbound HTTPS connection must be checked against reverse heartbeat request. So what we have is suppose if there are surface of clients who are you know uh, vulnerable to open uh, open SSL heartbeat extension vulnerability uh, they can be connected by a malicious server and data can be gathered so that data which will be downloaded by that malicious server using hard reverse heartbeat would not only be related to that particular vulnerable version it can also be related to any client data which is there on the client desktop or client machine uh, we would say we also mentioned a uh, reverse hardly tester again this was uh, you know, founded with the help of uh, Jake Williams the researcher who uh, you know termed this reverse hardly terminology and found out whether this can be exploited or not so uh, we have seen what is hardly we have seen what is reverse hardly now we will see what kind of products are affected uh, via hardly Okay, so uh, according to the web server survey which was conducted by Netcraft on 8 April 2014, 66% of websites around the globe used OpenSSL. But uh, to be on the safe side, there were only 17% which were susceptible to hard bleed bug. Now OpenSSL versions from 1.0.1 to 1.0.1F are vulnerable to this particular bug, hard bleed bug, which was fixed by OpenSSL in the latest release, that is 1.0.1G. Whereas the earlier version, that is 0.98, 1.0.0, were not vulnerable to hard bleed because the hard bleed extension was not introduced in those versions. As this particular attack, hard bleed, is related to heartbeat extension which is there in OpenSSL 1.0.1 only those specific versions are vulnerable to heartbeat okay so uh, when we see uh, the first release which contained heartbeat extension was introduced by OpenSSL on 14th of March 2012 and this particular vulnerability heartbeat attack or heartbleed bug was found out on 7th of April 2014 so it's been two years this particular vulnerability existed around us so we cannot say whether we are already affected or our data is you know whether it's the data is there without with some attacker and some server keys might also be there with them so since it's two years so we need to ensure that we are safe on our side so do change passwords what we have uh, as an open SSL, uh, since it's an open source tool, it also provides functionality, library files to be utilized in other softwares. Open SSL is used to protect various client softwares such as email servers, chat servers, VPNs, and various network appliances. Not only uh, some products, there are various operating systems which are shipped with uh, the potential uh, one level version of OpenSSL. Some famous one to be listed down 
Ubuntu, CentOS, Fedora, OpenBSD. So this particular version uh, of the operating system makes use of vulnerable version of OpenSSL, which is from 1.0.1 to 1.0.1F. Okay. Uh, not only operating systems and uh, some products, there are certain websites, be it large or small, from Google to Yahoo, Facebook, Twitter, technical sites such as uh, Amazon Web Services, networking products such as Juniper Excel VPN software which is used by you know various organizations and clients for VPN connectivity, open VPN, gaming so websites or uh, projects such as Steam, Wargaming, they all are affected you know, through Heartbleed. Smartphones. Now uh, Android version 4.1.1 is also vulnerable to Heartbleed bug. Also uh, Trend Micro had scanned uh, you know, around 4 lakh uh, of the applications from 1 million applications in Google Play Store where they found 1,300 applications you know, were connected to vulnerable servers. This 1,300 applications which were vulnerable to Heartbleed contained 15 banking related applications, 39 online payment related applications, and 10 online shopping related applications. So you can understand what kind of extent this particular vulnerability existed. There have been various uh, you know, levels wherein financial data could have been lost, uh, user credentials would have gone to the attackers. So, and it's not only through uh, desktops or servers, it is also through smartphones. So, what we have seen till now is basically uh, how an heartbleed bug would be there in the uh, organization or an environment. and. Now further what we'll see is how to identify whether we are vulnerable to heartbleed. To uh, go ahead we uh, know we can use automated tools such as Nmap. Uh, Nmap is one of the uh, tool which has upgraded itself to check the target system whether they are vulnerable to heartbleed or not. So what we have in this is Nmap uses a script which can be specified as hyphen hyphen script equals to SSL hyphen heartbleed. So what this particular uh, tool would do is this will scan the target specified for heartbleed bug and it will also specify which version of SSL is been used. So if you see open SSL 1.0.1 is uh, being used which is vulnerable to SSL heartbleed bug. So uh, we, if we know or if we want to know whether you know one of my target which I am using is vulnerable to Heartbleed, please feel free to download an app and you know use this particular script and you will have results in few seconds. Uh, again uh, we have one more uh, automated scanner tool that provides an option to create a policy for Heartbleed detection, uh, Nessus, it's a well known uh, tool which is used. So what this uh, tool does is it will, you know, in a similar way, when you create a policy uh, using Nessus for a heartbleed detection and you specify your targets, it will uh, scan that particular target and you, it will specify whether it was vulnerable to heartbleed or not. Okay. For end users, now uh, end users who use browsers and if they, they are not, you know, uh, up to that technical level to use Nmap and Nessus, what they can alternatively do is they can download plugins. Mozilla Firefox and Chrome have uh, the plugin implemented for Heartbleed where you just need to install uh, this plugin in the browser and whenever you visit to any site over HTTPS, this Heartbleed notifier or Chrome read would check that particular website or web server is vulnerable to Heartbleed or not and it will give you a notification that this particular site is vulnerable to Heartbleed. Uh, as I mentioned in previous slides, Android version and many mobile applications are also vulnerable to Heartbleed. You know, now uh, how we can detect whether you know any application in our phone is vulnerable to Heartbleed. So Lookout has uh, come up with this Heartbleed detector. 
what this does is, uh, you know, you can install this uh, tool from the Google Play Store. And uh, this will check for your uh, phone whether there is any uh, version of OpenSSL which is vulnerable to the hard blade path. And it will give you the status. Also, there are uh, various online tools which are available which can, you know, uh, over there you can go to the online website, uh, just specify your target. And what they'll do is they'll uh, actually scan for the vulnerability on those particular targets and provide you the results. Uh, since this bug was introduced in 2012 by OpenSSL version 1.0.1, .1, how can you identify whether your website was, you know, at risk at certain stage during this two years or two and a half years? What you can do is if you, you can contact your hosting provider or else you can uh, check whether your particular server or there was any uh, server which was running Apache or Nginx or any vulnerable version of OpenSSL or any software which uses OpenSSL as an extension or an utility. There are various online tools such as LastPass, Trend Micro and Macafe uh, which can be used to detect hard blade bug. Since this particular vulnerability is uh, you know, uh, related to the protocol or SSL, uh, it did not directly affect many of the CA certificates. So uh, if uh, your CA was affected with this particular vulnerability, they would have patched uh, and they would have rekeyed the certificate. Also they would have asked you to change the password. So you can come to know whether their website was affected to this particular uh, hard bleed bug. So what we have done till now is we have gone through hard bleed. We have uh, seen whether uh, we are vulnerable to hard bleed. What if we find that yes, I am vulnerable to hard bleed or my web server is vulnerable to hard bleed. How should I address those steps or address the particular hard bleed bug? So we'll go through the uh, steps which needs to be uh, taken. Uh, first is uh, if you're running a web server, what uh, we should do is we first we should first inform our users about our status, whether we were broken or you know, whether we will shut down our servers and how soon this particular vulnerability will be fixed. Communication is the important key wherein uh, if you are using the web server and there are customers who are using it, we should communicate it well to our users that uh, yes, I am vulnerable to this particular bug. So please don't use my website for a certain period of time and be updated, uh, you know, when as soon as we update a uh, fix and we'll inform you soon. The communication is the main uh, key over here. Second is fix the OpenSSL problem. It is likely that uh, if it is, a, you know, a software which is uh, vendor dependent, a vendor will have a patch ready for you. So you can follow your vendor and install the patch. Second, third thing is rekey the web server. You, your private key might have been compromised because of hard key. So what we need to do is we need to create a new private key corresponding with a public key. Reissue and, and install a new certificate with the public key and revoke the old certificate. This, this will mitigate any compromise which would have been done previously in the past because of hard key. Also, uh, you know, we what after this particular step is done of reissuing the new certificate and revocation of old certificate, we can inform the users uh, about our status and we can request them to change the password. Since we won't be sure whether you know uh, any username password would have been uh, gone out to the attacker because of hard bleed. So the request of password change is mandatory in any of the cases even if we reinstall the certificate or we uh, recompile the code using the option provided by OpenSSL. You may also want to consider mitigating future bugs or attacks by implementing perfect uh, forward secrecy, second factor authentication, end-to-end -end encryption or just hardening your servers. 
the forward secrecy is also known as perfect forward secrecy since it's a property of key agreements ensuring that session key derived from a set of long term keys cannot be compromised so even if any one of the keys is compromised in the future it, it will be just one key not the set of all keys so now what we saw was when uh, you know how to address the bug if we were running a web server now we will see how to address a bug if we are a client or an application or an end user who uses the web server if you are a client as the hardware bug can be used on both server and client we need to ensure does your client software has an update uh, also you know you shouldn't have any problem with your browser but there are many applications which are vulnerable to open ssl or uses open ssl vulnerable version so if your uh, web server or web service has told you that they are vulnerable please stop using those uh, service until they are fixed or patched and importantly do change your password what an end user can also do is with the help of various tools provided they can check whether the particular web service is vulnerable to hardly also there are various options in browsers wherein you can check whether the server has a certificate revocation uh, the example provided over here is for ie internet options what you can do is you can go in internet options and go to the advanced settings in the settings there has a check for server certificate revocation you can enable this point and apply the settings so what it will do is it will check for your web service whether the certificate has been revoked for that particular server the same uh, functionality has been implemented in chrome as well so now we have found out okay we have hard bleed at an attack or a bug in our environment over the internet we have found whether we are vulnerable to the open ssl hard bleed attack we have also uh, patched up the server which was vulnerable changed the password as well now we'll have to look from the future perspective what we can learn from hard bleed or this particular kind of attack because once this particular uh, hard bleed issue has been there it doesn't stop here this is just the beginning wherein there will be a chance of another hard bleed much as the same we know there will be chances of server crashes internet outages browser flaws email disasters and various chaos which brings are you know about in the internet so what we need to do is we need to you know have and i learn from this particular lesson and identify our organization use most importantly uh, you know for hard bleed it wasn't the issue with the ssl or the tls system which is there implemented it was the problem with open ssl so we should not uh, break our trust in using ssl or tls it is the open ssl which was the main cause for hard bleed which has been fixed now the main uh, point of concern is guidance on password policy there would be various organization you know whether where password policy is implemented but it's not been used so we do you uh, know uh, want people to understand the criticality wherein wherein we say you know don't reuse passwords change them often you know this policy should still be there and should be implemented in the organization for hard bleed revocation of certificate is essential uh, wherein uh, since uh, it is a critical part of the ssl infrastructure there might be possibility where an attacker would have grabbed the server key and if we still use the same certificate he would be able to decrypt the encrypted data and use it in a clear text like a normal book so we uh, do a pressurize on revoking the certificate how will we protect our business from similar kind of attacks what we can do is you know when we say from the perspective of cso cio cto in an organization they need to ensure that you know they protect their organization they protect their business from similar kind of attacks in future 
what we need to know is we need to know uh, be aware of the latest threats and vulnerabilities which are which come up so uh, for this what we can do is we can subscribe to security feeds from product vendors from security forums such as sans cert these are various options uh, through which uh, an end user at any level be it a cio level CISO level or be it a security engineer, they will be updated about the latest threats, vulnerabilities which exist in the environment. Alternatively, you can use Google Alerts for relevant security news. Google Alerts will pop your notification mail, uh, you know, if there is any security news or update in any of the forums. Second point is know your assets. Uh, you know, this would be uh, what kind of operating system I have in my organization, what this database which I have in the organization, what kind of version is implemented, is my system patched, you know, then we also can check for the uh, vulnerability status of this particular asset. Thirdly is to have a patch management system in place. This is very important, you know, in an organization where we have various kinds of assets of different operating system vendors, databases. Uh, you know, we cannot, uh, you know, stop or you know, or ignore this particular patches or updates which are released by vendors. So we need to understand whether there is a proper, system, you know, patch management system in the environment. So uh, who needs to be approached when patch are released, who will test those patches, who will deploy them, who will verify whether those patches are installed. So this particular mechanism of patch management should be there in the organization. Also being a security professional, you should know who your partners are, whom you interact with. So whenever if there is an issue, suppose for SSL, you should know whom to contact to if there is any emergency. You know, now in this case with Heartbleed, you should know, know whom to contact to, who is your point of contact in certifying authority, or who is your point of contact in case of emergency in your web hosting provider. If we do have this information, we can immediately contact them and find a, uh, know, a way to minimize the effect on the organization. Know your customers. We should ensure that we know who our customers are, who will use what information. We should you know, stay in touch with our customers because times we cannot build a new relationship. It is a good times when we build relationship with the customers and during hard times those relationships about the emergency which we have or some uh, you know, bug or attack which has been there on our organization. The customers, you know, we should have the contacts of the customers. So these are the various uh, steps which we need to protect the users. Now to move ahead, uh, no, in an organization, what we need to do is we need to have a step security model, wherein you know uh, if or if there is an attack. So how soon can we mitigate this particular vulnerability? How soon can we roll out a patch or block it on firewall? It, it it comes a big question, you know, when there is an attack on an organization, be it a DDoS attack or a hard bleed attack being a top level management, uh, they expect, you know, how soon this particular vulnerability can be mitigated. Or if we cannot mitigate it soon enough, can we start monitoring this attacks immediately? Do we have IPS, VAF, log event monitoring in place? So in case there is any scenario or any vulnerability which is there in the environment and we don't have, you know, enough time to mitigate it, or we require additional time to mitigate it. Do we have any monitoring uh, in place to uh, to identify from which source, uh, from, from which network, you uh, know, I'm getting this particular attacks? Also, if we get an attack detected, do we have an incident management process defined? Do you do, you, do we know, with, you know, whom to contact to, who is the system admin, 
you know, in the contact list. What is the escalation metrics which we need to follow if there is an incident in an organization? So these are the various processes which we need to follow to have you know an in-depth security model in an organization. When we think from security perspective, we also need to understand when we choose a software in, for an organization, whether to go with an open source or a commercial tool. So when we say open source, open source are not bad, but they have their own limitations. There would be, you know, the limitations in, uh, in a sense wherein there is no commitment, no support number. Since it's an open source, you don't need to have any support. The only support which you have for open source is forums, uh, the website if there are any blogs and various volunteers who work on that particular open source tools. When we say commercial products, we need to understand what kind of security programs these commercial products have. What is the SLA for fixing the problem if there is any issue with the commercial product. So this became important when we you know choose the software in an organization. So as I said earlier, you know, uh, what I'll do now is I'll show you a live exploit wherein I have a server uh, which is vulnerable to OpenSSL and uh, I'll first see whether that particular server is vulnerable using an nmap scan. So I'll show how an nmap scan can be uh, run and then I'll show you how this particular vulnerability can be exploited on the vulnerable version. So what we have over here is, uh, I have my uh, vulnerable server on 192.168.100.3 and I'll execute the nmap tool which is an automated tool on port 443 which is where uh, SSL is implemented using the script which nmap has provided to check whether my particular server or the target is vulnerable to heartbleed. So the script is SSL heartbleed. Okay, so when I execute this particular script, what nmap does is nmap will start scanning the server and it will uh, display me whether my server is vulnerable to heartbleed or not. So now you can see over here I have the port number which is specified 443. It says it uses Apache version 2.4.2 and it uses OpenSSL version 1.0.1c and it is vulnerable to SSL heartbleed bug. It gives a description, the introduction of the vulnerability and the references which is used. So now what I have is I have executed the script I know I am vulnerable to heartbeat using an nmap tool. Now I'll see how it can be exploited. So this is the particular site which I have on the vulnerable version. It's a knowledge based site wherein I can you know, insert my comments. I can uh, update a post. So what I'll do is I'll first uh, register the user on the vulnerable website my name, I have entered credentials, username as pal underscore HP demo and I'll add the password as well. So it says thank you for registering, so I have my user registered. My username was pal underscore HP demo. I log into the application. So I'm logged in and now I will create a sample article. I'll specify certain keywords 
personal field particular article. Okay, and I got of the application. So now what I have done is I have uh, registered the user on the vulnerable website. I have uh, logged into the application and I have created an article. Also, I know I am uh, running the vulnerable version of uh, OpenSSL, that is 1.0.1c, which is vulnerable to SSL heartbeat bug. So what I'll do is now, I'll I have downloaded a script from the internet, wherein this particular script will send a heartbeat request to the target specified, that is 192.168.100.3. What this particular uh, script will do is, after sending the heartbeat request, it will wait for the response. So, as you can see over here, what it has done is, it is connecting to the client on port 443. The connection was established, the, and the server was PNS version 1.2. Uh, the script has uh, created a heartbeat request which is of length 16384. So in this case, the length type which is used for heartbeat request is 16384. And I have received you know, a heartbeat response. This is a clear text response. You can see the memory dump in this case. If we scroll down further, we can see I was actually able to get the cookie which was used for the application. Now this was the form which I had used to create the information. So when I created an article, the complete article information is there in clear text, wherein there was a submit button where I used to submit and submit the article. This particular script can be executed various times since what server does is it will gather a random block of memory and it will give out to the user who has sent the heartbeat request. So what we'll do is we'll try to execute the script multiple times and we'll see whether we are you know actually able to gather some username or passwords or you no know, valid session ID through which you know I can impersonate the session. So in this case, if you see over here, it has given me a username and password for login. Now as you can see, the username which I used was tal underscore hp demo. But in this case what it has done is it has returned a memory dump of a certain location. Now this is for some different user. As specified over here the username is test underscore hp and the password is passwrd okay so what we can do is we can now try to log into the application so we'll confirm again the username is test underscore hp hp and the password is passwrd Okay, so it says your account may have been disabled. So with this what we know is we have gathered a clear text information from the server because of heartbeat exploit. And as and when you uh, know execute the script multiple times, it will gather multiple information. Uh, as I said earlier, this particular heartbeat request sends 16384 length of heartbeat request. So the server will respond different different instances. So it's a continuous process wherein you you know execute the script multiple times and you gather as much information as you can from the server until and unless that particular server is patched. So even if we execute it you know uh, again, we might get the same data or we might get some other information regarding any user on that particular server. Okay, so 
so that was the live exploit which was uh, there and we we were able to steal data and uh, here is the list of references which you know were used during my uh, preparation for this webinar what i'll uh, you know do is uh, i'll will have a short question answer session you know based if you have any questions please uh, feel free to ask them on the chat so that no, I'll, I can answer those questions and you know, clear the doubts if anyone has. Also, you can feel free to you know uh, contact me if you have any queries. Suppose if you don't have any questions right now, and you know you you want to ask some questions you know at later stages, you can feel free to contact me. Uh, my uh, email address is ankit dot agrawal a g r a w a l at paladin.net. Also, you know uh, uh, Paladin uh, is uh, you know uh, arranging future webinars, so you can always visit their website. Uh, which you know uh, are there. Okay, so we have one question over here. Do we have plugin for Heartbleed on Internet Explorer? Uh, as of now, uh, there is no as such a plugin which has been you uh, know there for Internet Explorer. But there are you know as I said earlier, there are plugins for. Uh, Chrome and Mozilla. Not to worry if there is no plugin for Internet Explorer. We have various online tools. Uh, you know, uh, once uh, the uh, presentation of the webinar is published, you can go through those tools. To list down some famous ones, uh, we have LastPass online tool. We have uh, McAfee online tool, Trend Micro Heartbleed Detector. Uh, so we can use uh, various online tools as well to detect whether this particular you know, web server or website we have is vulnerable to heartbleed. Oh, then there's one more question uh, is how can we identify whether the HTTPS website or web server we have hosted in DMZ is using OpenSSL or not? Now uh, since uh, it would be in a DMZ uh, environment and uh, you know uh, whether it's using OpenSSL or not. What I would suggest is, you know, generate an internal penetration testing wherein uh, you can initiate scans from inside the network to those servers uh, using NMAP or Nessus, and detect whether those particular servers uses any uh, vulnerable version of OpenSSL. That's the best thing which you know can be done. Also, you can uh, you know see whether what kind of assets or what kind of softwares are being used on those particular servers. It need not be Apache or Windows, you know, which has been installed. There are various versions wherein, you know, you have Windows installed on the machine, but there might be certain tools or certain utility which uses OpenSSL to encrypt the data. If that particular software which uses uh, OpenSSL, the vulnerable version of OpenSSL, that particular server is you know vulnerable to heartbeat attack. So you know if you want to identify your website or web servers inside the DMZ, the best way is to create or you know initiate an internal penetration testing and or uh, ensure what kind of assets you have in the organization. Uh, there is one more question wherein a uh, user has asked to demonstrate reverse heartbleed. Now, uh, as I said, uh, you know, when I explained who all are vulnerable to reverse heartbleed, it has to be a user or you know a client which creates an outbound HTTPS connection. So we first need to check whether any of the client is creating an outbound HTTPS connection. Right now, I don't have a you know a demonstration for reverse heartbleed. But uh, 
you know, I can try if I be you know able to uh, get a demonstration for reverse heartbeat. I will definitely post it on uh, our website that is Kodaden.net, and you know keep updated. So you know what you can do is uh, if you, you know you can contact me on my email address, and you can check for an update whether you know I have uh, gotten demonstration for reverse heartbeat or that I was able to exploit the reverse heartbeat as well. Uh, it becomes, uh, I won't say it becomes difficult or uh, you know, to check whether the particular client is vulnerable to reverse hardly. It's just we need to ensure that the client which is creating a, an open you know, outbound SSL uh, connection. There is uh, one more question wherein uh, user has asked where can I download Heartbleed script for testing? Uh, now, uh, in this case, there are two options. If you want to test whether your particular server is vulnerable to Heartbleed, you can use Nmap, Nessus, or online tools. If you want to uh, actually exploit Heartbleed, uh, you can download it from GitHub. They have uh, the script, uh, you know, which is there online, and you can download that, and you can use this particular script to exploit the servers. Okay, we have a list of questions now. Uh, how can we detect the threat from IDS? Well, uh, as a hard bleed, you know, is a request which comes in your network. So hard bleed request has certain packet structure and has a certain packet length. What we can do is we can create an alert in my IDS, you know, uh, in a detection mode, and we can see or you know detect what kind of packets are incoming in my network. If I have a uh, hard blade request coming in my network, uh, you know, a user can be notified. Hard blade requests have a specified packet structure, so an alert can be created. And if you have an IPS as well, you can you know then have notifications and get those packets blocked in the environment. The other question was, does this bug affect Windows operating system? This bug does not affect Windows operating system directly. If that particular operating system has a software which has installed uh, on the Windows operating system and contains OpenSSL as the feature or the functionality in that particular software. Now the demo which I showed, if you see, uh, I can show you that particular demo. It is a window, Windows machine which has been used. Uh, now in this case what I have done is I was using an exam control panel which is used for hosting websites. Now Windows directly is not affected. It's the exam vulnerable version which I was using which was able to, you know, uh, uh, able to be exploited. It used OpenSSL 1.0.1c version as its functionality or as its library files. So because of that, I was able to exploit the server. Okay. okay. Now, uh, please mention the names of discovery tools of Heartbleed vulnerability again. Uh, what I can do is I can go to those slides again for uh, a little bit of time. You can have a look. So there are some online tools which can be used to discover hardly. Uh, some are for from SSL check. Then you have LastPass, Trend Micro, McCafe. And there are various others online tools which are there to detect hard bleed. So this can be used, you know, in the uh, in your browser. Just enter the URL. They'll ask you what is the target you want to scan for hard bleed. Insert the target, and then uh, you know you will be able to get the result within minutes. As you can see in the first step, it specifies whether you have passed or failed the hard bleed vulnerability. This check is on sslcheck.csecurity.org. So if you go there, you can actually see whether the target is vulnerable to hard bleed or not. So 
so what our, uh, so what I'll do is if you have you know any more questions uh, please feel free to drop in a mail also I have uh, some more questions what I'll do is I'll answer those questions and I'll you know revert you back and uh, please feel free to attend uh, the uh, future webinars which are you know hosted by Palladian you can visit Palladian website and you can you know uh, always register to future webinars Thank you. Thank you everyone for attending the webinar. That's it from mine.